Good morning gang, I look super scruffy this morning <laughs> because I am going floating. I've not done a typical vlog in a little while but I thought this new experience that I'm off for, oh it's there, um, deserves a little vloggage. I'm going floating at somewhere called Floatworks. It is there, I'm very excited. This is where you're in a pod that is filled with 12 inches of water and a thousand kilograms of Epsom salts. And it's like an enclosed pod in the dark. There are lights if you want them and you're naked. And it's supposed to be really good for your muscles, really relaxing. And it's like the Dead Sea where there's so much salt in the water that you do just float. I'm a bit worried that I'm gonna sink. I'm gonna be the only person in the world who's gonna sink. In I go. Okay, so here we go. That's my float pod. I've just been given some like earplugs, some water, some Vaseline. There's also this like little halo to put under your head just in case you need a bit of extra support. Here I go, I'm very excited. Let's do this. That is without a doubt one of the most amazing things I have ever done. I paid for this by the way. This isn't like gifted or sponsored. This is this is genuine <laughs> genuine love and reaction. That was unreal. Oh, I loved every second of that. I know it sounds really boring to just be floating in water for an hour, but it was perfect. As soon as I started getting a little bit restless, the music started playing, which signals it's your last five minutes. I did get in and suddenly noticed that I had a, a slight cut on my arm, which started stinging immensely. Um, so I quickly got out and put some of the uh, Vaseline, the petroleum jelly that they give you. I think I've now got salt water in my eye because my hair's dripping on my face. I'm going to go have a shower and sort my hair out and stop my eye from stinging. And I'll report back in a minute, but thank you Floatworks for an epic morning. That was so good. They've got this really great little hair and mirrors room where they've got the straighteners, like actual proper GHD straighteners. That's ridiculous. And nice hair dryers. So it's a good job I bought my hair products with me. I bought a new coat. I bought a new coat and it's equal parts ridiculous and brilliant. This week has kind of escaped me a little bit. I've had something on every day. Um, what have I done? What did I do this week? Monday? Monday. Monday I was doing a little bit of recording with an old friend who I haven't seen in about six years. On Tuesday I went to Snaresbrook, which is a part of London I never go to, but I went there um, to go to Groom World to see Michelle who offered me a very lovely gifted facial which was unreal. And I was in there for like an hour and 45 minutes. It's the longest facial I've ever had in my life. It was amazing. Then yesterday I did floating, two shows. Today I've got a meeting, a photo call for Les show this evening. Tomorrow I've got a physio appointment because I fell over on stage the other day. I fell over on stage quite badly and I'm a little bit worried that I've injured myself. So just gonna go have the once over at physio. Oh, and I'm seeing Sophie Isaacs tomorrow for coffee and cake, which is gonna be marvelous. But right now I've got a very exciting meeting about something I cannot tell you about. Okay, I jumped the gun a little bit. I've got to wait for my agent to get here because we're meeting outside. But something that makes me very sad, I'm gonna cross the road. Something that makes me very sad is that a long time ago, <laughs> um, Waterstones held a pre-order competition to come and bake cakes with me or decorate, was decorate cakes with me. And the place that we did it was here on that corner, but it's now not a bakery anymore. I mean, it's a patisserie, but it's not the same bakery or the same management, I guess that we did our little decorating thing in, so. I do have to say though, I think that Covent Garden is my favorite place in London. I absolutely love it. Every time I come back, every time I walk through it, I'm always like, this is my place. So today we are taking all of the photos that will appear in these little gaps and for the brochure. But first, I'm very early. I'm an hour and a half earlier than I need to be, so I'm gonna go get some lunch because I have not eaten yet. So, I finished my photo call at 10 to four and I brought all of my gym gear in, my running stuff, just in case I got the chance to go for a run because today is supposed to be a training day. It's supposed to be a 40 minute run. 
I was like, the weather's not that great, and what if I, you know, get held up in a photo call and I don't get time? But I finished at 10 to 4, and I was like, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. I've never run on a whim in London, I've never run whilst at the theatre, because I've always found excuses not to. And I just went for it, so I walked to St James's Park, because a little bit of a warm up, and then I did a 5k, and now I'm gonna try out our showers that we've got in our dressing room for the first time. So, it's a day of firsts, I'm very excited. <sighs> Hello everyone, I don't think I have too long because I think my camera's gonna run out of charge, which isn't ideal, but it's my fault for not charging it. I am still in that place where I feel like I don't know what to make videos about, or if I do have an idea, I've convinced myself that it's not of any interest to anyone, and I just really miss the days of YouTube where I could just sit down in front of a camera and just talk about something that I was interested in and people who were also interested in it would happen to find the video. I, I, I miss old school YouTube. I think that's all I'm trying to say. I, and I miss feeling like I can make things that I love and things that I'm interested in without the hassle of haters, <laughs> I guess. So when I had this thought process the other day, I was like, I'm gonna make a video about it, because why not? I'm just gonna. I am fed up of, <laughs> really good start, I'm really annoyed. I am just fed up of people not feeling like they can celebrate their achievements, or say, do you know what? Actually, I am really good at that. That's something that I have managed to nail in life, and I should be proud of that. I think it's a very British thing as well, I think, us Brits are very self-deprecating. It's seen as arrogant or cocky if we say, no, that, I'm really good at that. That's something that I'm really good at and I'm really proud of myself for being really good at that. Or I achieved this thing, like I got a new job or I got a promotion or we don't like talking about it. Or when we're asked about it, we go, ah, oh, it's not a big deal. It, well, I, you know, it was just a little thing. We play it down because we don't want people to think that we're vain or self-obsessed or arrogant but it's starting to skew the other way or it can skew the other way and it can be sort of detrimental when we start believing that our achievements are minuscule and they don't actually matter and they aren't as big a deal as they are and i think i started thinking about this in depth when i saw this tweet it was retweeted let me see i think i took a screenshot of it where is it here it is uh Actors, please don't moan when out of work. Please don't gloat, then say you're tired in work. A labourer doesn't show off taking a photo of the doorbell of a house he's about to work on. He's picked for the job, is pleased, and gets on with it. Be humble. People will love you for it. I get the sentiment behind it, I think. In fact, saying that, I don't even know if I do. I understand there's sort of a fine line between having confidence and faith in your own abilities and arrogance and cockiness. But I think if a labourer did do a really good job on a doorbell of a house or building something that they were proud of, they're well within their rights to take a picture of it and be like, I'm really proud of this. I made this. Isn't it great? And I think when it comes to females as well, my red light's flashing so I'm gonna have to talk quickly, but I think we have a tendency to shrink ourselves and minimize our achievements and our capabilities. It's not ladylike to talk about how great you are at something. It's unseemly to be seen to be gloating about an achievement or something you've worked towards and accomplished. And I'm bored of it. I'm bored of it. I wish we all just lived in a world of rainbows and ate cake together and oh. I wish there was butterflies and ponies and unicorns. But seriously, I am re I'm really bored of it. I'm bored of feeling like I can't talk about my accomplishments and I'm bored of other people feeling like they can't talk about their accomplishments. For the minority of people that are gonna be like, oh, well, I didn't get that. I didn't, I haven't got a new job to talk about and I haven't achieved anything brilliant recently. And so I don't want you to talk about it because that makes me feel bad about myself. And it's human to feel bad about yourself <laughs> when someone else is achieving something you would love to achieve. It's normal to feel that kind of envy and that jealousy, but we can't then expect other people to shrink themselves and minimize their accomplishments because we feel a bit shit. Don't minimize your success. If you've got something to celebrate, 
celebrate it, tweet about it, put it on Instagram. And if people are gonna be annoyed at you for gloating or being self-congratulatory or vain or self-obsessed or whatever else they're gonna call you, it's their problem, it's not yours. You're allowed to be excited about your successes. You're allowed to be like, do you know what? I've nailed it. I set out to do something, I put my mind to it and I achieved it and I did it well. I'm now going to go have coffee and cake with Sophie Isaacs. I will see you very soon, goodbye. Good morning and welcome to a very windy double show Saturday in London. I'm off to Tesco, looking very scrappy, um, to get some ginger, honey, lemon, and some pepper, just to make myself a little concoction. Not that I'm feeling under the weather, but I can just feel myself tipping slightly over the edge of tired. <laughs> so I thought I'd just give myself a little medicinal treat. Okay, so I've got all my bits and pieces, but on the way here I discovered the most amazing thing about my new coat, and it is the fact that the pockets are big enough to hold the book I'm reading. Best coat ever. Okay, now I'm on my way to the theatre. I've got about half an hour before I need to be in, so I'm going to grab some food on the way, and then I'm going to make myself my little potion. I'm definitely stealing that when I leave. <laughs> The show has begun. I've just prepped myself another little glass of ginger, cayenne pepper, honey, and lemon. Filled the kettle with some water. So when I come up, we just boil the kettle, pour it straight in, bish bash bosh, done, done, done. We were all given these lovely Lamez chili bottles as an opening night gift, and they've got our names engraved on them. How great is that? And it's blue, matches my costume. Today is a pretty casual, standard double show day. And tomorrow, my plan is to go for a run but Oliver leaves tomorrow to go to Manchester to start Back to the Future. I mean, it's been in rehearsals, but they start teching as of next week. So I lose him for three months. Hopefully I'm gonna try and go up there and see Back to the Future. Um, but I've only got four weeks left of Les Mis before I leave. I think it's four weeks. Four weeks today, I leave Les Mis for seven weeks and then I come back until July the 20th and then I leave for good. And there's a lot going on. I'm very busy in my seven weeks off, and in the run up to those seven weeks, there's a lot of planning and prep to be done. The bishop is singing, so I'm gonna get my rags on, and I'm gonna head downstairs, and I will see you when I'm dead. <laughs> 